it's obvious that I'm pushing buttons and he's not able to push my buttons. You know, this is different from any other competitor that he's competed against, meaning he cannot out-talk me. And I'm, you know, as far as in the fight game, whether it's the octagon, the boxing ring, no matter where you fight, it in the backyard. You know, I still have a sharp mind, I have a high IQ. Boys, is he the best trash for me to look at? Um, there's been a lot of trash talkers. You know, at the end of the day, he's not bad. He's not bad, but, you know, he, he, we'll, rate him, we'll rate him number two, because I'm number one. We'll rate him number two. He's not bad. He got heart. Floyd, do you have to prepare for these press conferences? You guys are selling out, you know, 13,000, 50,000, 20,000 viewers just to see you guys yes. talking. About. Do you guys have to prepare for these things as well? I mean, it's a job. I signed, I signed up for this, you know, uh, but I really want to say thank you to everyone in here. Just, you know, this is my last fight. I came, you know, it just, it's grueling. You know, just years and years and years and years of just fighting, traveling, and I gave Al Heyman my word. I shook his hand the other day. <clears throat> I shook Al Heyman hand and gave him my word that this will be my last fight. And I promised him this will be my last fight. So, um, I mean, I thought the Berto fight was going to be my last fight. But I'm still a bit, I'm still a businessman. And I had to make a smart business decision. And the fans demanded this fight. But it had to start from somewhere. And it started with me. Do you think uh, this fight is bigger than the Pacquiao fight? We'll, we'll just see, as far as the turnouts, you know, the press conference, the turnouts that we, you know, going from city to city, this has been by far the best of any press conference. Um, well, I had a big press conference before with Canelo. I think we've done somewhere like probably 20,000 in Mexico. So, you know, I've done big press conferences before, but, you know, just three countries, Four cities in three countries. I mean, what? Uh, three countries and four cities in four days is is grueling. Yeah. You know, it's hotel, you, hotel. And you can't even unpack your bags. You're on to the next, on to the next, on to the next. You know, trying to eat, trying to squeeze that in your schedule. <clears throat> it's grueling. Pat, Pat Man and you did 4.6. Do you feel that this is going to pass that? Mm -hmm. Maybe break the five million? Well, uh, hopefully. Only thing I can do is just hope. You know, and keep believing. You know, the only record I would be breaking is my own. You know, uh, for those that don't know, uh, I hold the, the top record in pay-per-view. You know, whether it's MMA or boxing or UFC, it's all the same. It's contact sports, and um, well, I'm saying it's a combat sport. It's a combat contact sport, and um, I hold all three records. And if we break it again, it's going to be four records. Connor's been very, very uh, vocal about Connor's been very, very vocal about knocking you out within four rounds. Uh -huh. What do you make of his bold prediction? Um, I don't really, you know, I don't really think about that. You know, I, yeah, I know. Um, you know, just, uh, I got, I told him yesterday when we was talking face to face. You know, I got a granite chin. I'm the only fighter you know never hit the canvas. Been there with some of the biggest punchers. But he's he's very unorthodox. Younger. Youth can be on the side. We'll just see. Do you respect him for telling you face to face that he's gonna knock you out in four rounds? Well, you, you have to make the I respect him as a man. You have to respect him as a man first. I respect him as a man first. But as far as his fight game, you have to earn my respect fight man. Do you think you can make him quit for it? Um, I just don't know. You know. I don't know. You know, I don't. Anything, anything can happen. I won't quit. So you know, my thing is, kill or be killed. Either or. Floyd, why do you think um, this fight has got such a negative backlash by some of the fraternity of the boxing world? Uh, what, what do you believe um, in the boxing community? Uh, there's been a bit of a negative um, comments about it. What do you believe about? 
Well, you know, <clears throat> it's called that jealousy. That comes with the territory. Upset. I mean, this is big for both MMA and the boxing world. This is huge. As you guys can see now, every UF, every MMA guy is trying to fight a boxer. I mean, a fight like this can only happen once in a lifetime. Mm. This is a very, very big event. And, you know, I have to take my hat off to Conor McGregor and Dana White because, you know, it takes more than just myself. Uh, it took more than just myself to make this happen. But to make a fight of this magnitude happen, I had to be involved. Yeah. And it, and it seems like um, with McGregor as well. I got my own. Yeah. It seems like uh, with McGregor, he's brought out the best in you in terms of aggressiveness. Is that something you've particularly enjoyed? Um, whether I'm aggressive or calm, one thing I can do is fight. You know, so it, don't, it really don't matter. One thing the world know, Floyd Mayweather can fight. When it's all said and done, I can fight. Right here, Mike. Given the jealousy that you spoke about and how, how it's like Oscar Wilde have dismissed the credibility of this fight, what will it do for your boxing legacy? Um, my, my legacy, if I'm not mistaken, I should go down to the Hall of Fame, if not the best, at least one of the best. But my legacy is going to say that out of all the fighters that was in the sport of boxing, Floyd Mayweather by far was the smartest fighter, not just in the ring, but on the outside of the ring. Right here, Luke. Um, you said yesterday in an interview that you think you're in over your head and you're going to get embarrassed. As someone who's just in the window in the boxing world, what were your thoughts on that? Me, I like it. I like that he got confident. And I, can, and I take my hat off to him. That's the confidence that we need. We need more guys. We need more guys like, because they say, they say McGregor has brought the, the vintage Floyd Mayweather back. They say he's, he's brought the pretty boy Floyd back. We need more guys like the young Mayweather, the pretty boy Floyd Mayweather, the Conor McGregor. We need guys to be more aggressive towards each other and more you know, trash talking towards one another. That's what we need in context sports period. A lot of people are saying as well, because obviously, you know, he does have that unpredictable style, he is never made by it. People are saying they think that he's going to cause you problems in the first two rounds. What are your thoughts on that? It's going to cause, it's going to cause what? That he's going, to, <laughs> that he's going to cause problems in the second, first and second round, because obviously it'll be the style that you're not used to, because he's not a traditional boxer. Um, you guys know, um, guys, Got the best of me before in the first round. Guy got the best of me in the second round. But, um, like I said before, when I talked about the IQ, I can make adjustments. One thing about me, I can make adjustments. You know, you look at the Shane Mosley fight, I got hit, hit with a good shot in the second round twice. When I came back out in the third round, I was a total different fighter. So I can make adjustments. Floyd, is Connor as great as confident as he sounds, or can you see something to tell you about? Um, uh, he's, a, he's a warrior. He's a warrior. That's one thing we know about Connor McGregor. He's a warrior. Um, he's going to fight to the end. And he has the same. I think he's, he's approaching this fight the same way I'm approaching this fight. It's either kill or be killed. And I think we're both taking the same approach. And uh, believe me, ladies and gentlemen, believe me when I tell you this, it's not going to be a dull fight. Believe me. Floyd, here. With Connor having no professional boxing matches, how much time have you put into studying his UFC fights? And is there any value in that for you? Um, you know, I, like, I like to stick to the, to the same game plan. If I never watched tapes throughout my career, and the reason why I never watch tapes is because once these these guys and these opponents face me, they come with a total different <clears throat> game plan and they come with a total different style. So, you know, um, 
I, I just I just make adjustments when I get in here. I adapt once I get in here. And we'll just see how everything goes. Are you expecting some weird things from him, or are you expecting him to come out like an orthodox boxer? Or something? Well, you know what? The question has been asked to me on many occasions. Are you worried about an elbow? Are you worried about a knee? And my answer to, to that is um, I'm just going to let the, uh, the referee do his job. And I'm pretty sure the referee's going to be fair, extremely firm, but fair. And the Nevada Commission is all about treating both athletes and both competitors fair. Right here in the glass. Lloyd, logic, history, and common sense tell us that you should win this boxing match very, very easily. Does it surprise you that so many people are giving Conor McGregor a chance in it? Well, you know, I think, they, like I said earlier, when I answered the question, I think they're they going by. He's active. <clears throat> I, mean, I mean, he's a lot younger. A lot younger. Um, taller. Longer reach. And I mean active. Older. You know, sitting on the shelf, a little dusty. You know, a little, a little rusty, I should say. But we'll just, you know, we'll see. I can't really, I don't, you know, my job is to go out there and do what I do. You know, he's a stand-up fighter, he's a fighter. At the end of the day, when you look at Conor McGregor, every time he go out there and be victorious and get knockouts, he's standing up, doing what he do best, fighting from his shoulders. The three times we did see, see Conor McGregor come up short, he was on the ground. What's the, what's the biggest thing you've learned this week about Connor that you didn't previously know? Mm -hmm. I never really, I don't really know him. You know, I never really, I, you know, I'm not trying to be funny or being disrespectful or rude. I really don't know him. I don't know too much about him. You know, I heard, I heard about his name in the UFC. You know, I'm about him fighting the UFC. But it's a lot of guys in the UFC. But I see why Conor McGregor is where he's at. He can fight, and he's tough, but he's also an entertainer. And a lot of other guys in the UFC are like, oh, well, I'm undefeated and I can fight. But you don't have to give the gap. You don't have a certain personality. You don't have a certain swag. Just like me, you got fighters in boxing. Oh, I've got 33 fights. I've got 33 knockouts. But guess what? We sell them the same. Th we sell them the same thing, but you don't have the same sales pitch that I got. You know, people, you knocking people out, but they want to see you fight for free. I don't have to knock them out. This is a beautiful art that people pay to see.